Hi, it's Maria, and I'm doing another Maria Unfiltered, and this is in the Forgiveness to Love, and this is number 33 of my life exposed here. And so today, we're going to um, have some fun. This is going to be page 16 of my forgiveness list, uh, where we talk about MacBooks and exploding cars and security systems and 1213. And I've tried to start this three other times, and um, yeah, there's either a blender or a saw or something. So um, anyway, I'll try not to be too distracted and you too. Anyway, today I'm going to share some more situations to be aware of. Um, as far as um, my computers go, all my Macs and all my PCs, they somehow just seem to get hacked for some reason. Can you imagine that, you know? Um, for anybody who's watched any of the Forgiveness to Love uh, videos, you're thinking, um, of course, I mean, what else is new, right? After all, you've got uh, more creepos hired uh, to displace you from your money than, uh, than we've ever heard of, right? So anyway, I have different country keyboards on, on the Macs that show up and flags showing up um, on my screen. And files are rearranged on my home screen. And then I sometimes can't access my own files. They, they, I guess they go into some other computer that's um, hooked up to mine. But anyway, they're not on mine. So, so um, and sometimes it says you can't save it because it's saved on some other device. And I'm thinking, or you have no permission. <laughs> so I'm thinking I have no permission to even save my own stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, and then when I uh, write some of my passages for my books, as soon as I type a paragraph, um, if the truth, you know, angers the creepos or family or whatever, you know, then my words and sentences and paragraphs uh, conveniently get deleted, you know, or my own writing makes me look like um, I'm the one that's the um, aggressive prevaricating nut job, you know, because um, when you only have 50% of the information of what I've written, then there's no, um, it's not balanced at all, right? And so um, anyway, um, and it makes some, it makes the other side look like they're so perfectly calm, right? And normal. Um, but then that's what happens when uh, there's professionals deleting and editing anyway. Um, but so then I think, okay, well, I'm going to get a new computer. However, you know, when you, um, if, if you then take your information and you put it onto another computer, then you also take the Trojans or the, the yeah, um, the, the tracking uh, software or the, yeah, the viruses, whatever they are, you t also take that with you. And so um, anyway, I, I just decided I really, I had run out of space totally. And so I decided to get another computer. And so um, um, I just thought, okay, well, I'll go to the Apple store. So I went to the Apple store and I did Google Maps to find out where where in Tampa it was. And so, um, and so I said that on my phone and I said it on... Um, the microphones, you know, that are around me. And so anyway, um, uh, it's pretty easy to say, oh, you know, the, the tall, dark haired woman wearing blah, blah, blah is coming in. And so um, anyway, I went in there and they said, oh, sorry, lady, but we're all out of MacBook Airs, but we can order you one. Okay. And I, I, I thought, oh, well, um, strange that they'd be out, but um, I thought about that. And then, and then I remembered that once I actually ordered hair color online. It was, um, it was the same kind that I got at the health food store, but they had like some special or something on Amazon and it was like uh, you buy a case. And um, so anyway, it was a, a great price. And so I, I ordered a case, but um, I fell right into their trap, you know, because it actually turned my hair like this reddish straw and it made my scalp itch like crazy. And so I thought clearly, you know, that purchase made a pit stop along the way. And if that happened to hair color, imagine what it would happen to a computer. And so um, anyway, I, um, I uh, decided that I would um, not order it online. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and so there was, um, there was a, uh, 
Best Buy store a few blocks away. And so I mentioned that to my friend and I, that I really needed to get there. And so, you know, I'm sure that um, everybody knew that's where I was headed. And so, um, because I had videos that I really wanted to put out, but um, I couldn't upload them because I was, you know, my storage was full. And so anyway, as soon as I walked in the door of this Best Buy store, it, it just, sometimes I can really feel energy and sometimes I can think I'm feeling energy, right? I mean, we, we all kind of get those ideas, but then we never know if, if, um, if our intuition is right. But anyway, there was a manager and she was very sweet and she was vacuuming right next to the MacBooks. And I said, you know, I really need a computer and I need it today. And so she said, what luck, you know, we have only one computer, one MacBook that you'd be interested in. And it's in that, uh, the new copper gold color or something. And I really didn't care what color it was. And so it, and so I looked around and I wondered what, what, what was I seeing? right? Was I seeing, um, was I seeing really good actors in place or, um, was I seeing, um, it was, I seeing people doing their job and trying to be very helpful. And so anyway, I said, okay, I'll take it. And, um, then came the bill saga, you know, and, and so I looked at it and it was, um, they had a special discount here and then they had added tax there. And then there was no tax on part of the bill, but some, but some tax on another part of the bill. And so in any event, um, it was like Gomer Pyle. Anybody remember Gomer Pyle? Anyway, it was like surprise, surprise, surprise. And so I looked at the bill and it was twelve thirteen. It was one thousand two hundred and thirteen dollars. And I remember uh, that illustrious number that I've mentioned before in other videos. That um, un unbeknownst to me, when there was like some dark sabotage or something, a lot of times there was twelve thirteen. And so I um, alarm bells went off in my head. And I thought, oh, I remembered that, you know, I have, I've made several videos of my possessed Honda that I, you know, obviously I, I was so dumb in the beginning. I really, I thought there was something wrong with the Honda. I didn't realize that my family was, was doing this whole thing and that they had passed out fobs to all kinds of people that were, you know, like emptying gas tanks and, and turning on wipers and, uh, ultimately trying to, uh, I guess, leak the fluids or something so that it would become overheated rumbling and explode with me in it. Anyway, um, when I took it to the last, um, the last dealership, it was in Oregon and I took it because it was rumbling and smoking and stuff. And I took it there. And so they said, like, look, lady, there's nothing wrong with your car. Just drive it. And, uh, and I thought, drive it where? Like the morgue? Or where did they want me to drive it? I, I couldn't drive this car. Anyway, um, they they checked it and they said, there's nothing wrong with it. And, um, and so uh, when I looked at it, I got in the car and I had to drive it where, because I, I had to get it off of their property anyway. And so um, they said, well, um, I looked at the odometer and it was 1213. And I thought that was very weird. And so, um, you know, I was truly afraid of something really negative happening to uh, a rumbling, overheating car. And so um, I remembered that twice within, um, within just a few months of that experience, uh, yeah, maybe even a few weeks of that experience, I had seen two cars explode, like um, within with like the next street over when I was just uh, standing, one time I was standing at the beach and I, um, I was riding in my car and I looked up for some reason and all of a sudden this car just exploded in, and it was just all in flames and the whole thing was just the craziest thing I had ever seen. And by the time the fire tr department came, um, there was nothing there but ash. And so, and then another time I had seen it, I was in the Whole Foods parking lot actually, and across the street, all of a sudden, um, a, a car again exploded. And so, um, so I remember looking at the odometer when I was leaving this uh, Oregon uh, Honda dealership, and I looked at the odometer and it said, 1,213. And I thought, well, that's interesting because when I brought it here, it was only like 11,000 something. And I thought, 
Well, what did they do? 30, 40, or 50 miles? They drove it overnight? Or was there some odometer um, finagling or, or whatever? I, I just didn't understand. Anyway, the whole thing felt very weird. And I'll tell you what. Um, also, so it wasn't just that odometer. And it wasn't that the um, that the Best Buy um, invoice was 1213. But I also remember when I um, had applied, you know, for you've all heard this one, when I had applied for Social Security survivor benefits, when I understood that um, that uh, the ex had passed and they said, uh, no, you know, we can't give that to you until uh, you provide us with a death certificate. Well, you know, no one, I couldn't find that death certificate anywhere, even the, the Cook County clerk and the Illinois Department of Public Health and, and, um, and everything, they wouldn't give it to me unless I had that death certificate. And I couldn't, Social Security couldn't give it to me without the death certificate. And so um, I looked online, one of the, the, on the form, it said you needed the deceased's address. And I mean, I hadn't seen him in years and years and had no idea where he was, but I looked up online and he was living on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. And um, the unit was 1213. And so I, um, I called a realtor and just to confirm that it was in his name and that's where he lived. And they said, lady, there is no 1213 um, in that building. And so I thought that was kind of weird. And um, so someone, whether the information was wrong online or whether this realtor wasn't telling me the truth. Anyway, um, what's really interesting is that Social Security's phone number happens to be, I think it's 1-800, perhaps 772-1213. Um, and so um, that was one hell of a coincidence, I thought. But, um, you know, I, that led me to wonder, I mean, I really, if that happened to you, wouldn't you wonder, like, how can all these stores and agencies um, sabotage you? Um, like, my, uh, my family just doesn't have that much clout. I mean, they really don't. My parents were wealthy, but as for, um, they never used their clout. They didn't, they really didn't uh, do those kinds of things. I mean, my dad was, um, you know, a gynecologist. He was an obstetrician and gynecologist. He loved delivering babies. And my mother was just this amazing little angel that just, you know, did as much as she could for everyone around her. And so um, we don't even think about trying to, um, trying to finesse our way into anything. It wasn't ever ever anything that I grew up even thinking about. And yet here it was like, um, you know, I was just put in a situation where it seemed as if everywhere I turned, <laughs> there was someone sabotaging me. And so, um, you know, I just, and in terms of, of the, um, in terms of the MacBook, you know, um, I, when I opened the MacBook up when I, I paid for it. And then, um, actually a friend paid for it for me, given my, my, um, my wonderful financial position. Right. Um, so in any event, I opened the box and, um, I saw that I was set up, uh, for the setup. And so, uh, I think I mentioned to you that, um, my son's a computer whiz one that uh, has been working with the sibling and and his his father while he was alive. And so um, that he, he can hack into just about any computer. And I think I told you that um, when he was a little boy, I had sent him to this computer camp. And uh, even when he was uh, living in London, he would say, oh, I'm going to hook up your computer to mine, mom, because I want to help you in case you have any issues with your computer. I can just fix it. Um, long distance. And so I thought that was a great idea. But then I didn't realize that he was actually hacking to work for his dad. But, um, but in any event, uh, when I opened it, um, it, it, it had already been set up. And so even though it came in with the plastic all over it and everything, and I opened it up and, and um, 
Yes, it had already been set up. And there was a huge golf ball on the home screen. And I thought that was really interesting because that son was a really good golfer. And, um, and when he was, I think he was five years old and he was already really golfing with men. Um, in the summer, all my children golfed, they played tennis, you know, they swam virtually every day when they weren't at a horseback riding camp in Colorado or at a computer camp or a hockey camp or a basketball camp or traveling with me. And so, and, and son was really very talented and he, I sent him to, um, oh, what are those golf, uh, Myrtle Beach and things like that anyway. And he's ambidextrous. And so he had special custom clubs. And so, um, so, um, there was this golf ball and I, I thought, oh, Yes, my son. Uh, but how did the computer go from wherever it was made to, to it made a pit stop on the way, or maybe it came from Best Buy and then it made a pit stop and, um, and then it was rewrapped. And so, and then it was, yeah, just exactly what I needed, right? And so anyway, after that, I, um, I took it back and I said, you know what, there's something wrong with this computer. And they said, uh, no, can't hack a Mac. <laughs> and I said, really? Well, I have news for you. Anyway, they said, well, you can't turn, turn it back in now. And so um, we can just reset it. That's all we can do for you, lady. So they reset it They and they said, now, you know, it's like factory um, factory settings and there's nothing on it. And so you'll go through the, uh, the setup process. And so anyway, I, um, I got back home and I opened up the computer and I turned it on and on the home screen was now a giant parrot. And, um, I thought, oh, <laughs> how interesting is that? Because it, it had already again been set up and, um, and so um, a parrot, you know? And so I thought, oh, well, that's interesting because um, as sibling has taken so much of my writing and so many of my ideas and creative projects and, and things like that, it's almost as if she parrots me, but then puts her name to it. So I thought, oh, I guess, you know, the golf ball was to show me that the ex, the, that the son was involved, and then the parrot was to show me that the sibling was involved. Anyway, um, but I also remembered it. It reminded me of, uh, especially when that one salesman said, "Can't hack a Mac," and I remember um, I used to have uh, super duper alarm systems where I lived, and so um, they were on uh, the, you know, there were detectors on on the doors and the windows and the heat and the fire and the motion detectors and, and all that stuff. And um, the, uh, the salesperson would say, lady, we swear, you know, you're totally protected. No one can get in, guaranteed. And so um, when people did get in, you know, I'd call the police and they'd say, oh, rubbish, you know, all you can do, all you have to do is just block the signal from uh, from the house to the station, whether it's tied into the police station or whether it's tied into um, their big network. And so uh, whether it's cameras or, or alarm systems or whatever, um, you know, when there's a will, there's a way, just like uh, opening a computer and seeing, you know, your family's telltale signs of letting you know that um, there isn't anyone that they really can't get to. And again, I, I just couldn't even imagine um, what that must feel like. I, I don't know. Do they just pick up the phone and they just say, okay, well, um, she needs a new computer. And so we're going to get this computer and we're going to take it to the Apple store. And then from the Apple store, if she doesn't get it there, if she doesn't order it there, we're going to then take it to Best Buy because she's going to go someplace around there because she really needs a new computer. And so anyway, um, I just, what can you do? Right. You know? And so, um, all I could think of was that, um, 
these crimes don't go unpunished by the divine, right? They might go unpunished in, in this three-dimensional world that we live in, in this matrix of sorts, uh, but in a, on a larger scale, you know, everyone ends up being called for what they've done in one form or another, whether it's the infinite intelligence of all or it's the God essence or, and um, the angels and archangels and heavenly beings and uh, all the energies that have created heaven and earth. You know, um, they all know. And the energy is there because of the energy of every thought and our every energy of, of our every word and action. And so the more that the sibling, you know, tries to take my life and my identity by forging my signature on bogus documents and even on life insurance policies, you know, to split with men I barely know who end up saying that they're married to me, the darker and crazier life gets, you know, and um, we're just not here to be ugly and we're not here to do ugly to other people right? I mean, uh, we're not here to selfishly destroy others. We're here to nurture, nurture ourselves. Remember, it's all about self-love, but we're here to nurture ourselves and we're also here to love ourselves. And by loving ourselves, then we are capable of loving others. But again, if we don't love ourselves and if we don't, uh, well, if we don't love ourselves and we don't forgive ourselves, on a very deep level, then we aren't able to forgive others or love others, right? And so um, we're not here to harm and destroy um, ourselves or anyone else. And so um, sometimes human beings um, in their most unconscious state, right, um, are walking disasters and, um, and so they then dabble in black magic and spell work and things like that, that I have no idea of anything. And I really don't want to know about it. Actually, I just know that I've, I've heard that sometimes my family dabbles in that. And um, so I, I just, uh, I remember when I did tell the ex <laughs> years ago that I was leaving him finally for sure. And that no matter what else he could threaten me with, I wasn't going to stay. I was going. And so I remember he laughed and he said I wouldn't get very far because he had a voodoo doll. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my gosh. I mean, here is, you know, somebody who claims he's Mr. Chicago and uh, has has um, reporters write about his illustrious career. And he's he doesn't want his, his wife to leave because she knows things about him that he doesn't want out. And um, I had no intention of of saying anything anyway. I just want it out, right? But in any event, um, and he was practicing with a voodoo doll. Anyway, it's a, a very dark and creepy, creepy thing. And But we all have people in our lives who are jealous of us or who try to thwart our progress or who might see the light in us and want to snuff it out, right? And so, um, and so I even think about my son who, um, who has decided to side with his aunt, right? Because she's the one that has the money um, or has given him the money or has given him a portion of my money or what anyway, or anyway, but um, who has actually hated him for ever since he was a little boy. And in fact, one time, I think I told you that when I was um, um, my babysitter, I was going to law school, night school, and um, after I had just had a baby and um, I, uh, ran to a class, but my babysitter uh, couldn't make it uh, that day or she was going to be an hour late or something. She was an intensive care nurse. And so she said she, she couldn't make it. And so, um, so I called my sister and I said, is there any way you can come so that I can go to my class? And she said, okay. So she came and while she was babysitting him for, I think, two or three hours, you know, he, he fell off slid off the sofa or something and onto a travertine marble table that was uh, in our in our living room and smacked his head and gashed it and everything and he was bleeding by the time I got home. But anyway, you know, uh, I don't know that she did that on purpose, so I can't possibly say that. But all I know is that um, that there was a lot of jealousy going on. And so I, I realized that sometimes we... Of course, we would never even think of doing something like that to to our siblings' 
child or to our, our niece or nephew or even a stranger for sure. And yet, um, and yet uh, that happened to him. And so I'm thinking if he, you know, has inherited or taken so much of my money and the focus is on let's take as much money as we can, I, I certainly am concerned about my son's own safety, right? Um, because there are, um, we all have a choice, right? And so far when, when the history is that uh, people have chosen the dark, then um, it's, it's delusional of us to assume that, um, that they're going to change like that. Now that can happen and that can be like this most amazing, fantastic awakening of all time, right? And yet um, we need to be realistic and know that uh, it's a choice whether one chooses the light or the dark and that there are consequences for every um, decision we make. And so, um, you know, that's, I think I'm going to end it um, right now because um, I want to get, I want to tell you more about some fantastic and beyond crazy insane behaviors in number 34. And so remember, your job here is to experience all that life has to offer, right? In the best possible way as an empowered human being who knows that they are divine because you are divine. And so you can choose to act in such a way, or you can choose to go down a dark and dirty path, which doesn't really serve you because you will have to come back and do it over, I suppose. I mean, no one really knows, um, except maybe some of those people that have come back and, and remember their, their former lives. But um, anyway, that's kind of beyond the scope of this one. But um, take to heart and become the very best self. And so now let's go to um, number 34 and we'll get into it. And so anyway, until then, I love you. Bye.